Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to continue our Netflix analysis and we're going to put a little bit of time into the stock analyzer tool and then we're going to use the rest of the time going over the chart. And that is going to complete our view request for Netflix. There's not going to be a part three video for Netflix. Um, but nonetheless, I'm not a financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and it's for entertainment purposes only. I have no individual holding in Netflix, nothing to gain, nothing to lose, simply stating my opinion. Okay, I have put numbers in. I've ran multiple projections off of this. And normally I would not do that when I'm making an analysis on a video. But if you haven't seen my last video where I go over the financials, all kinds of red flags, I wanted to just zip through this video and move on to the next uh, set of videos that I'm going to make. So if you haven't seen that last video where I go over those red flags, I'll put a card up here so that you guys can easily click this and go to my last video and check that out. Or you can simply go to my last video, whichever one works for you. Uh, okay, so going into this. For revenue numbers, right here, let's go pull up some this revenue. You can see from 2019, steady decline in revenue growth. You see that steady decline in revenue growth. And this is a time period from 2020 to 2021 where their business definitely benefited. No question about it. I think Netflix is losing strength. I think... Uh, Cloning in this industry, uh, a heavy race is taking place in the streaming industry, and I just don't see Netflix gaining. Netflix is not gaining strength right now. I'm just going to leave it at that. And you can easily see this revenue decline. This is, It's not there. Am I going to be putting in 20, 30, 40% revenue growth for this? No, no chance. And it'd be easy to hop onto the software and say, oh, yeah. 10, 10 to 20 percent revenue growth looks really good no I don't see it guys it's just not there so for revenue numbers I'm going to use I would probably use six through or four through eight but for the sake of this video I am going to boost that up a little bit and we'll go six eight ten you know I would be surprised if they underperform this I don't think this is being conservative I think this is a reach but we'll we'll use six through ten profit margins let's go look at the profit margins real quick a couple of acquisitions uh, over the year and I think that is potentially boosting the net the net profit it, it's it's possible maybe they're able to put they're starting to kind of build consistency over the last four quarters but I'm not going to use profit margins up here you can see uh, as they're from 2017 2016 through I mean, this is a newly profitable business. Now, you could say, oh, that's going to continue increasing as the business goes. Mm -hmm. Guys, highly competitive space. They're losing dominance. I, I just don't see it. But I do like this floor price that sets in 2020 around this 10 to 12. And then also leading up to that as well, there's a nice floor that's set around 6 to 8. So you could use numbers right in that range, six th or 8 through 12. But we'll, we'll just go 8 through 12, and we can go back and touch base on this real quick. Now, free cash flow margins. They're not bringing in free cash flow. I state this in my first video. Fluke year, COVID year, 2020. Didn't, didn't have an acquisition in here. Here's an acquisition that's probably uh, touching base on or touching up on some of their financials. I would definitely look into those acquisitions. But look at the huge decline following that. Leading up to that, negative, 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 negative. Guys, I just don't see it. For the, for the, for the stock analyzer tool, we are going to use the same numbers just to give you guys a, a decent look of what this projection could end up looking like. Now, for 6% revenue growth, okay, 18 or 15, 18, 21, you could say that's pretty reasonable for some of the pro, for for some of the numbers. And like I said, this free cash flow margin. They're not putting these numbers up. No chance. If you disagree with that, you know, I I would like to hear some reasoning on, on how they're going to change their business to be able to consistently match free cash flow margin with profit margin. I, I don't see it, guys. And we want a 15% return. I think these numbers, this is being extremely generous. We'll hit analyze. Yeah, I, I don't see it. We're not even close. I think this these middle numbers are even a stretch right here. Now you could say, okay, put those profit margins up. They're going to continue growing. Okay, we'll be generous. We're still not there. Not even close. Not even in the slightest. Current price, 225 No chance. 
no chance. Now, if I even lowered this to my four through eight, okay, we're still not close. Eight, 10, 12, eight, 10, 12. We'll even leave the PE at those high ranges. Nowhere near, not interested at all. This is why I would say probably stay away from Netflix. Now my numbers could, maybe, maybe they prove me wrong and Netflix uh, continues to build dominance and hold that presence in that streaming space, but they haven't showed me anything in the financials that would lead me to believe that. So we're gonna move on from this stock analyzer tool. I feel I got my point across that I do not like the valuation of Netflix, not even in the slightest. Okay, moving on to the charting aspect of things. I'm on a week chart. First thing I'm gonna do is set a trend line. Let's actually move it to a month chart. And let's zoom into this a little bit so that you guys can see it a lot better. Now you see this double bottom, you see this higher low wick that comes in on that month. That's your buying pressure. I like this higher low that sets and you can see the same thing right here. This is exactly where I wanna set my trend line right through all that and I even want to get this third point of con that extra point of contact in right there that's going to give me solidify a nice set of support off this trend line and guys it's it, it's right there this trend line at current price is meeting in sixty seven dollars okay you could run that okay maybe we go in a retrace and we don't come in contact with this trend line till over here okay that's still a hundred flat we go back to my evaluation hundred flat right at my middle assumption I, I don't see it and uh, people are probably I would be I wouldn't be surprised if people actually have their trend line set like this where they're saying oh you gotta run it through right here we're actually bouncing off the trend line right now you gotta run it through the whole thing boom 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 we're hitting our trend line right now we're gonna get a nice little pop right here this is where the retrace is gonna come in I wouldn't be surprised if people have their trend line set like this and they're like, oh, yep, bottom's in. We're up from here, boys. This is trapping a lot of people right here. This is not how I'd set my trend line. No chance. You got a nice double bottom, higher low, nice double bottom, higher low that meets in right here at my previous low. This is my trend line, without question. If people are setting their trend line different than that, they are not setting their trend line correctly. And it, it here it goes. It, it shows you right right there. That's how I'd set my trend line. I don't really see correlating channel in with this, simply because I think the stock has ran irrational. But here's my first retrace. Let's switch it to a weak chart. We do get some direct correlation off right there. We set this triple top. Boom. There's the start of my trend line. You can see the demand where we start our trend line. You can see right here, we set a lot of wicks into that and we set a nice double bottom right here. You know, this trend line could actually even be set lower. It could be set right in around right there. We don't come in contact right there, but look how long we trade sideways at this full extension. Extraordinary. That's from 2004 and we break out and we never come back five years later in 2009. Now their business has changed drastically. No question about that. Now with that, their business has changed drastically during this time period where they they jumped into the streaming I looked and I think they started getting into the stream business around 2007 okay here's your 2007 and we end up pushing through that full extension and we get bullish now you can see oh we don't get any rejection off my full extension we stay bullish right there uh, yeah it's pretty simple uh, how I would state that is that you got a nice uptrend right here boom 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 we stay on this uptrend as soon as we crack that uptrend boom what's this percent drop 78 82 percent drop as soon as we crack that trend line so you can say oh your your uh, fib tool we kept pushing right through it as soon as we crack that trend line boom 80 percent drop let's take that fib tool out let's take this trend line out let's run a fib tool from this move top of the move bottom of the move and you see direct correlation my first extension we hover around we, we are getting wicks into my second extension we put this double top into my next extension trade sideways right here a little bit of rejection right there but nonetheless you have same scenario guys you have a trend line that's trying to hold now 
we, we fully extend up here now this is 2018 the streaming business is striving let's go back and look at the revenue revenue and profit during this time period in 2018 they're consistently putting 30 percent profit margin or revenue growth consistently there is demand the demand is there this is going to definitely uh, skew how a fib tool works if the demand is there supply and demand if more people want to buy it than sell it's going to go up now nonetheless we do get this sell off right here let's put one final fib tool and we do set a higher low off of this i like how that looks we have a nice one two three four you see how let's go to a day chart and look at that let me show you guys this right here so where are we at here's our trend line right here so you have this drop Okay, so the double top comes in right here, right? Here's my fall down to right here. Rejected, clear rejection off my 702. You see how we have this? I'm sure this was an earnings day. Let's go look. Clear rejection off my 702. We sell off. Okay, like I said, earnings. They post it after hours. It gaps up. It trades up. Puts a direct wick into this into this downtrend one two points of contact we had direct correlation off of my 702 and we trade up after earnings on that day direct correlation meets perfectly with it where we then sell off boom so let's mark this out let's get this fib tool out of the way we have our sell off we retrace to our 702 we hold support this is not a wave three we set a double top into my downtrend. You see this downtrend right here? Double top into my downtrend where we get our wave three. There's our wave three. You see it, guys? Now we get our wave four. That pretty It does get on top of my wave one, but nonetheless, we get rejected, and we ultimately get our wave five that comes in right there. Now you have trend line buyers, that initial trend line. And we do get an initial sell-off that goes even further. And then we get bullish after that. You guys see how all that works? You see a clear 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wave structure. A little bit more of a sell-off. But then at the end of this, at the tail end of this, you get a nice boost. Now when it sells off again, you set this higher low. So in this 5 wave structure, I'm going to want to put a fib tool top to move, bottom to move. I guarantee you there's correlating evidence right here. Look at that. Put all kinds of wicks into my first extension. And even more in particular, we gap up over it. We set a close right there. Hard rejected gap up over it. Tries to hold on top. Tries to hold on top. Gap down below it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Gaps down. I love seeing that. And yeah, all kinds of action. And ultimately, we set this double top coming pretty in contact with my second extension. And here is the... Here, here's where it starts. We get a clear rejection, double top, and boom. What is this percent drop from this time period? I, I mean, playing with this stock, I think, is playing with fire. I really do. I think you're playing with fire if you're messing around with this stock. And I think the, the long-term trend line says it best. Here's my long-term trend line. Double bottom, double bottom, contact. 75 to 100 bucks do i like it down there 75 to 100 bucks yeah if they can put these numbers up over a 10-year period okay 75 to 100 bucks i like it there and that is going to wrap up my my uh analysis on you on uh netflix i hope you guys enjoy the content if you don't or if you disagree, feel free to leave some comments. I'd be more than welcome to answer any questions or any concerns that you guys have with my analysis. Uh, but nonetheless, send me a couple more uh, tickers. I'd love to do uh, more viewer requests. And we'll see you on the next one.